Greetings, viewers, and fellow Star Wars fans. This is the older brother here with the second requested versus video Jedi Master Yoro Poof versus Jedi Master Opo Rancisi. Um, don't worry, I will get to Hassan's Ventures versus Darth Vader. That will be the next versus video I make. In fact, I might make a different video between these two, but whatever, we'll see. Uh, let us begin. Yoro Poof was a Corman Jedi Master and a revered member of the Jedi High Council in the years leading up to the Clone Wars. Rather mischievous in his use of the Force, Master Poof was a consummate practitioner of the effect mind ability, thus limiting his need to wield his lightsaber. Sitting on the High Council for years, Poof sacrificed his life in 27 BBY when he drew in the deadly powers of the Infant of Shah to protect the Sizidans of Coruscant. His body rejoined the Force Fu's cremation at the Jedi Temple's pyre. As a Quirman, Poof's unusually long legs, body, and neck caused him to stand some three feet taller than other humanoid species. In addition to his upper arms, Poof had an additional set of delicate arms, which he hid under his cloak. Possessing remarkable dexterity because of the extra set of limbs, Poof's sensitive olfactory glands were located in his hands. He had two brains, one located inside his skull and the other inside his chest cavity. Out of the four Quirman Jedi enrolled in the Order at the time of the invasion of Naboo, Poof was the most senior. Like the Jedi ideal would dictate, Yaro Poof was a compassionate individual, never putting an assignment from the Council above helping out an innocent fellow being. A peaceful man, Poof had a mischievous nature and often enjoyed playing tricks on people with his talent for effect mind. This playfulness was not a sign of carelessness. Poof often warned students that altering someone's perception could prove dangerous, sometimes even fatal, and should only be attempted by a competent individual who was in control of their powers. While a talented swordsman, Poof preferred to negotiate peace rather than wield his lightsaber. When first designing his weapon, Poof selected a yellow crystal to power his blade. However, he eventually switched to using a sapphire crystal instead. A devoted Jedi and a believer in the Galactic Republic's pro Penasty for goodness, Poof laid down his life to ensure both would continue on, protecting Sizidans not only on Coruscant, but across the galaxy. Hero Poof was a gifted illusionist, using the Force to project images into the minds of us. Using talent, he could draw on the fears of others to frighten them, create a doppelganger of himself to fool an opponent, or make himself appear invincible, a trick that could fool other Jedi. Among his other Force talents, Master Poof was famed for his telekinetic ability to trigger fires by manipulating the molecules of combustible objects and his rare talent for battle meditation. As a corpsman, Poof did not have a spinal column, thus he could contort his body in a w ways few other species could match. Coupled with his extra set of arms that could move independently of each other, Master Poof was extremely dexterous. Opo Rancis is an adept strategist and tactician, was a Thispian male who, ad who abducted to the throne of his homeworld in favor of becoming a Jedi Master. Offered to the Jedi Order as an infant by his mother, the blood monarch of Thispius, Rancis was apprenticed to Master Yaddle, trained to become a Jedi Knight almost two centuries before the Battle of Yavin. In 186 BBY, Rancis's sister was killed by terrorists, and he was offered the throne. He declined and stood preferring to continue on the path of the Jedi. After achieving the rank of Master and being given a place on the Jedi High Council, Rancissa served as one of the Jedi's top military advisors due to his tactical nous. He also had, was a member of and often led the Council of Reconciliation. Rancis served the Jedi Council throughout the reemergence of the Sith, the Separatist Crisis and Battle of Geonosis, and when the Clone Wars began, he became a Jedi General. Along with Yoda, Rancis has spent much of the war on Coruscant, organizing and coordinating Republic forces throughout the galaxy, such as during the defense of Kamino and the Battle of Zadja, conferring with Supreme Chancellor Palpatine and serving on the Council of Reconciliation. Near the close of the war, Rancis has learned of a separatist operation on the planet Seleucami. Dark Alkalite Sorobulk was overseeing the creation of a cloned Mogukai Shadow Army which Rancisus feared would prove a match for the Jedi. This Thisbian Jedi Master led a team of Jedi and three battalions of clone troopers to Seleucami and besieged the planet for five months. Rancisus used his battle meditation to aid Republic forces during the conflict, to the point of exhaustion. Sorobulk used this to his advantage, sending a group of Anzati and assassins to slay Rancisus, but the Jedi Master was able to fend them off and defeated his attackers. 
However, the attack had in fact been a ruse orchestrated by Bulk, who used the distraction to enter Ancissa's chamber unnoticed and stab in the Thespian in the back, killing him. Operancissus was talented in a number of force powers unconventional among the Jedi, as well as in lightsaber combat and unarmed combat. Although he rarely used his lightsaber, preferring to orchestrate attacks from inside a headquarters or to use the force against opponents, Rancissus fashioned the traditional weapon of the Jedi during his training, a simple green blade. Rancissus used the weapon to fight off the Anzanti assassins who infiltrated his chambers and attacked him during the Clone Wars, killing or incapitating all of them. Sora Bulk, who had once been among the most talented swords being of the Jedi Order, acknowledged Rancis' skill with a blade and thus opted not to engage him in direct combat but to instead use subterfuge to kill him. Rancis' lightsaber abilities were augmented by his skills in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He used any part of his body that he could to attack any enemies, including his forehands and his tail. He was strong enough in unarmed combat to defeat the Blood Monarch on Fispian in an honor duel during the Clone Wars. A military mastermind, Rancisus was one of the few Jedi of his time to master the ancient Jedi art of battle meditation, a ability that was over 5,000 years old when he learned it, and known to be used by the famous Jedi of old, including Odin Ur, Nomi Sunrider, Thawne, and Arca Jeff. In Tyona Solster's documents about battle meditation, she listed Rancisus among those Jedi, suggesting that he was very skilled at using the power. Yarrow was an effort practitioner of battle meditation alive in Rancis's era, and the two, two used it together to help Republic forces on Trokin during the Stark Hyperspace War. The power allowed the user to envision his or her desired outcome of any current battle, and, if properly used, his vi this vision could be made to come through, via subtly altering the odds against the user's enemies, sapping their morals, and boosting his or her ally's courage. St. Rancisus used this power to great effect during the attack on Seleucami. He also used it to attempt to view the outcome of the entire war, though he was stopped by a never factor, the Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Sidious. The unconventional Jedi power of Malachi, which many Jedi opted not to learn, preferred to use simple methods instead, was a speciality of Rancisus, and that he taught it in the Jedi Temple for many decades. The power was used predominantly as a defense mechanism. It caused no permanent effects, but turned a victim's equilibrium against him or herself, including incapitating nausea and dizziness for several minutes, enough time for those who were being attacked to escape. Most Jedi found it easier to employ powers like Effect Mind or Force Push to halt the attacking enemies, but many of Malachi's proponents argued that the power might have benefited some of its victims, and reminded thugs that they, like their prey, were not invincible. And now the verdict. These two Jedi are actually quite similar. They are both of a, from an unusual species, they both mastered battle meditation, they're both generally overlooked members of the High Council, they both learned battle meditation, etc. But simply put, Oporancissus is the more powerful of the two. Yarpoof never really demonstrated much ability with a lightsaber, at the very least Oporancissus was able to fight off a large group of Anzanti assassins, forever impressive. Yoroproof may be, have no spine and be able to do feats that most species would find physically impossible, but Ophorensis' Thespian body also gives him a major advantage, one that outranks Yoroproof's mere trickery. Neither of their force powers would actually be that effective, as battle meditation is not applicable in one-on-one -on -one combat, Neither really is setting fire, and a majority of Yarrow Proof's mind tricks wouldn't work on Opo Rancisus. So really, it does come down to which one is more physically adept. And the simply put, Opo Rancisus' th snake-like thespian body is much stronger and powerful than Yarrow Proof, and his lightsaber skills are simply put better. I declare Opo Rancisus the winner.